So it looks like the F-16 is headed to Ukraine. What capabilities will this give Ukraine that it doesn't have now? Well, it's actually fourfold. The first capability is the AMRAAM, which will help provide air superiority. The second capability is the HARM, or high-speed anti-radiation missile. That will destroy Russian air defenses. The third is PGM, or Precision Guided Munitions, to strike high-value ground targets. And the fourth is the Harpoon Missile for maritime patrolling and striking ships. Now, I'm going to go in-depth in a couple of minutes, but let me recap what the F-16 is and why it's important. The F-16 is essentially the Ford Mustang of fighter jets. It's fast and agile and relatively cheap. See, it was designed back in the 70s, and the Air Force had been moving towards these heavy, complex fighters, and the F-16 was envisioned as this fighter that could outmaneuver any cannon or missile that was fired at it. It was intended to be the perfect day VFR, or visual flight rules, dogfighter. The F-16. An aerodynamic masterpiece, tested and proven superior for today's air combat arena. Over 4,500 F-16s have been produced for 26 different nations around the globe, and they're still being produced today from Morocco and Turkey and even Iraq. The fact is that it's the second most popular jet in the world, the first being the Soviet-era MiG-21. And this popularity has led to over 3,000 different weapons carriage configurations and over 180 possible weapon systems. And the real advantage of this is giving these jets to Ukraine, there is this entire parts infrastructure that can support these F-16s. These fighters have been around for years, and there's a robust supply system that has sprung up around these planes. So let's go through each of the four advantages. The first capability is the AM-120 AMRAM missile, which provides air superiority. Right now, Ukraine doesn't really have control over its own airspace. They're still flying sorties, but at a very limited rate. Now, Russia is keeping Ukraine at arm's length. They really are doing penetration bombing like they did at the start of the war. Instead, they're firing standoff weapons at long range, meaning long range cruise missiles and glide bombs are being fired from Russia to keep themselves away from Ukrainian air defenses. Now, when it comes to CAP or combat air patrol, it seems like Russia's kind of hanging back with MiG-31 Foxhound interceptors and F-35 flankers. And when they spot a target inside of Ukraine, they fire A-13 Axe Head long-range missiles at it. And when I say long-range, I'm talking 124 miles. These missiles are hypersonic and fire and forget. They don't actually have to track the missile to the target. The missile gets there itself. In fact, these missiles are fired at such long ranges that Ukrainian pilots are forced to rely on ground control radars to let them know a missile was just launched at them, which means they have to turn around and abandon their mission. The American AM-120 AMRAAM can level the playing field. Now, depending on the version, it has a range of up to 87 miles, and that's the Wikipedia answer. The real range might be a little bit further. It's not equal to the AA-13, but it's enough to force the Russian Air Force to patrol further away from Ukraine. The F-16 can carry six of these AMRAAMs, so this is step one in clawing back Ukrainian air sovereignty. The second capability is the AGM-88 Harm. This is an anti-radiation missile, meaning it is designed to destroy enemy radars. And even if you turn the radar off, the Harm remembers where you are and kills your radar anyway. Now, this missile made the news in August of 2022 when the U.S. retrofitted the Harm to be fired by Ukrainian MiG-29s. But there's some problems. The MiG-29 was never designed to fire the Harm, and from what I understand, the Harm has to be pre-programmed for this method. They use a laptop and they tune the harm to the specific radar it'll be attacking. Now, that's fine if you know the target you're going after, but if you're out hunting for radars, a process known as wild weasel, then it's not so effective. Remember that scene in Flight of the Intruder when Grafton and Cole make themselves bait for the North Vietnamese surface-to-air missiles? Well, that's wild weasel in a nutshell. You fly until you're illuminated by radar, then you shoot a missile right down that system's illuminator. The F-16 was designed with Wild Weasel as one of its primary roles, so it can hunt for Russian radars and then destroy them when they get illuminated. This will force Russia to do one of two things. Either they will have to constantly move their systems, which is a pain and takes an enormous amount of manpower and fuel, 
or they have to pull back to areas that are safely in the rear. This sets up the next capability. Now, the third capability is precision strike. With Russian long-range air defenses pushed further back, Ukraine can use precision weapons uh, on the F-16, such as the JDAM or the JDAM-ER for extended range, which is a glide bomb, to strike at Russian command and control centers and supply dumps. Now, you still have to worry about man pads or man portable air defenses, but one problem at a time here. They're still in a better position than they were before, especially if they're using GPS-enabled glide bombs because they can launch them from further away. The fourth capability is maritime security. The F-16 can carry the AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missile. Now, Russia has used its Black Sea fleet as a missile launching platform against targets in Ukraine. So, just the threat of losing more ships the way they lost the Moskva may force Russia to either keep their ships in port or pull them further back. And that's pretty much it. The F-16 gives Ukraine these four capabilities which are crucial to taking back sovereign territory. Now, if you're a former F-16 pilot or a maintainer and you want to help, the International Legion is now accepting applications for pilot and maintainer roles. You can find out how to apply in the pinned comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, hi, America. It's me, Elon. Uh, if you want to be cool like me, go and get a Ryan McBeth t-shirt or hoodie from Bunker Branding. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a high mile shirt because it fires rockets, and rockets are pretty cool, just like me. Ha 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 ha, you fool. It is me, Mark Zuckerberg, from Facebook, and I will be the coolest once I get a Patriot shirt because the system is fully automated, just like me. <laughs> I'm going to get a U.S. Navy Department of the Boat People hoodie because I love their management style. Now, I will be cooler than any of you lads once I get my drone sweet drone shot. Now, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because they blow up just like windows. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Oh, no. It is Steve Wozniak from uh, Apple. That's right, you nerds. You think you're the coolest for wearing a shirt? Well, Ryan McBeth is all the work, yeah. So go buy a shirt from Bunker Branding to fund Ryan McBeth to increase your understanding. Oh, yeah!